Good morning, Huntington Chapel. To those joining online, welcome. I praise God for this house. And I praise God for the shepherd of this house. When he was called to this house, there was but a few, maybe a handful of people. And the doors were about to close. And he answered the calling on his life. And rebirth happened right here. The church of God continues because God always has a remnant. He always has faithful ones. And last night, by extension, the love of God enabled a people who had no home to come and to worship right here. And the shepherd of that house asked me to extend a very grateful, thankful greeting to Pastor Doug. The family of God, there's nothing like it. This morning I'm going to read from 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. As I've been reading and rereading the words of John, this is what came to me this morning regarding the beauty that I saw last night. Dear friends, let us want love one another, for love com comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges Jesus as the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. Please stand as we open our service in prayer.
Father, we thank you for the words that are contained in the book of life. We thank you that there is a Savior of the world. And we thank you that it is because of his love and sacrifice that we have access to the throne of the one and only living God that our requests would be made known and be heard and with faith be answered. We thank you for a Father in heaven. And Lord, we ask that you would come here and be with us today that we might celebrate this love. In Jesus' name. two of us here gathered in honor of your name today. And so we give you all glory and honor and praise, acknowledging that you are here in the midst of us. We know that we are entering the hall of a king, the most high king. It's not something that we take lightly or take for granted. We also know that your word says that we are to enter your courts with praise. So we choose to surrender everything that's going on in our minds that may be contrary to opening our mouths and honoring you. We choose to lay down our own desires, our own feelings, and we choose to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We choose to implement your word into our lives and we choose to act it out. And so before we begin our worship set today, we just wanna honor you, glorify you, and lift your name on high because you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy of our glory and honor and praise. We choose to fix our minds on you right now, to close our eyes and focus in on you and you alone, not on the music, not on the people, but on you, our King. Sing this with me this morning. So oh. 
just the voices. I exalt Thee. I exalt Thee. I exalt Thee. I live stories that have proved your faithfulness I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend And there is beauty in what I can understand Jesus is you Jesus is you believe you're the wonder working God you're the wonder working God all the miracles I've seen too good to not believe you're the wonder working God and you heal because you love all the miracles we'll see too good to not believe too good to not believe, too good to not believe. And I can't resurrect a man with my own hands, but just the mention of your name can raise the dead. Yeah. Hold the glory to the only one who can. Jesus is here. Oh, Jesus is here. Oh, I believe you're the one to work in God. You're the one to work in God. All the miracles I've seen to cut to you're the one to work in God, and you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see, too good to not believe, too good to not believe, too good to not believe. the most important part of the song. These are the things, if we put our faith together, truly surrender in Him, we'll see that happen here and everywhere around us in the world. We'll see cancer disappear We'll see broken bodies healed. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We'll see real life resurrection. We'll see mental health restored. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We'll see families reunited. 
will see prodigals return. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We'll see troubled souls delivered. We'll see addicts finally free. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We'll see cities in revival. Salvation flood the streets. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We'll see glory fill the nations that the world has never seen. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Cause I know that he can. Yes, I believe you're the wonder-working God. You're the wonder-working God. All the miracles we'll see. Too good to not believe. You're the wonder-working God. And you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see. Too good to not believe. 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 You're too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Too good to not believe.
in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Cause you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all the word says perfect love casts out all fear. Lord, we ask that we would encounter your perfect love. We thank you that your word says you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. May we come to know the truth of that love, for your word says that God is love. Show us the truth of who you are. Help us not to project the love that we received from humans onto you.
We don't want another program or another lyric or another song. We want you, the truth of who you are. Come and encounter us in a new way today. As we come to the end of ourselves, that is the beginning of you. I say I surrender myself before you afresh and anew today. I want more of you today. And I will wait here, right here, right here for you. In the awkward silence, in the pause, I will wait for you. Because I'm desperate for a new touch from you. Come fill me afresh and anew with your love, Father God, with your spirit, Father God, with your life, Father God. I don't want to go on another day just the same or the same level of relationship with you. I want more. I want to go deeper. So I'll wait for you. Yes, I.
words over yourself until you agree with them you can prophesy your own promise your words have power the power of life and death is in the tongue Jesus, you're all that's worth living for. 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 Jesus, you're all that's
it's worth living for Jesus it's all about you I'm falling on my knees A falling of me Jesus, your always heart is living Yeshua, Yahweh, it's your name above every other name. Yeshua, Yahweh, it's your name above every other name. Yeshua. It's your name above every other name. Yeshua, Yahweh. It's your name above every other name. Yeshua, Yahweh. It's your Yeshua, Yahweh, it's your name above every other name. It's your name above every other name. It's your name above every other name. It's your and sing your own song to him. Give him praise. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Father God, because you are worthy of our glory and honor and praise. Whether you do another good thing or not, you are worthy. We lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
every hand lifted in the house thank you Lord we worship a mighty and awesome God in this place hallelujah we give God glory in this house hallelujah yes amen we serve a mighty a healing a restoring God we shall not be defeated we shall not be left behind for our God is good in, in, and out of season. Hallelujah. Regardless of my circumstance, I will praise him. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you. We honor you in this place this morning. And as we get ready to take communion, we lay everything aside for you. This is about you. It's not about us. It's about you. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Even in the moments when we were unfaithful, God, you were faithful. And for that, we say we love you because you love us first. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
I'm going to apologize in advance for the mess of the juice. Uh, someone made off with the dispensers, so if you do have it, please return it. Um, uh, um, yeah. Also took a little longer to get it done. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us confess our sins, all that we have done to hurt each other and ourselves in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have messed up. With our words and our hands, we have not been kind to others or to our own selves. We are hopeless without your love. We are afraid of running out of things, so we take more than we need. We are afraid of what could happen, so we forget that you were with us all the time to give us peace. We spend the night with worry instead of prayer. Forgive us again and fill us up with your abundant mercy. God is rich in mercy and love. No matter how much we mess up every day, his love never runs out. Just as God's love is for you, so is the meal set before us. You are forgiven and ready to feast at the table in the name of the one who died to set you free for the power of your sin, Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he distributed to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. But the ushers come forward to uh, distribute the bread. And we do have gluten-free for those who so require it. Ted, if you want to be Mr. Gluten-free. This is the gluten-free. So for those who require gluten-free, if you could signal for Ted.
body of Christ broken for us. supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and handed it to his disciples, saying, this is the covenant, of the new co or this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, drink in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, this is the cup of our salvation. Let us drink of it with joy and thanksgiving.
And so as they're collecting the cups, we are going to jump right into the announcements here. And I just wanted to point out in uh, Kellogg Hall, some of you guys may have noticed that as you guys are leaving that exit door, to the left of it, we're starting to put up the weekly schedule so that every week you could look at it. And I wanted to point out we've got a handy dandy coloring system here. So on the, the days that we have the regular meetings, it's in this bluish color. If we don't have anything, we have it in red. And if we have something that is not a regular event, it's in green. So especially a lot of you guys are used to coming to a particular meeting every, you know, Monday or every Tuesday. But I want to encourage you guys, look at the green ones, because that means that there's something happening. And those are typically the dates that we announce. So if there's a monthly meeting, for example, this uh, Tuesday, we're going to have our men's monthly meeting. So that'll be in green. So look at that schedule as you guys are out in Kellogg Hall. So with that, let's go over some of the announcements. So, and as I pointed out, so this Tuesday, the men's ministry will be meeting at Danny Trezinski's house at six o'clock, six o'clock. Uh, so all are invited, all the men are invited to that. They're gonna have dinner and a Bible study. Wednesday is a little bit irregular. We typically have the Bible study, but during this fast, we've been doing the midweek prayer and worship time and uh, for those of you guys who were there this past Wednesday you guys know it was really amazing God's presence was really felt there this is going to be the last one of this month so we want to encourage all of you guys to make the most of this fast and come out and join us this Wednesday at seven o'clock then um, Saturday from 9 30 to 12 at Lucetta's house they're going to have their monthly time of uh coffee and Jesus session. So this is for the women's ministry. All the women are invited to this. So for more information, see Lucetta. That said, also in not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, we're going to have our winter work day. So we want to encourage you guys to come on out for the winter work day. That's in two Saturdays. There's some jobs that we have for inside, but we also want to encourage too, if there's ministries it's a good time for you guys to kind of look what are some of the things that you guys need to do, whether it be like organizing wires or closets or whatever you guys need for your particular ministries, cleaning out certain sections. So that'll be in two Tuesdays. I also wanted to point out that it is that time of year where uh, you guys get your donations back, your donation receipts for 2023. So for those of you guys who are in the system, it has already been emailed to you. If you didn't get it, then we have a printed form of it. So this is also going to be a good way for me to gather anyone's information that, uh, you know, has, we don't have you in the email system. So those that have not had it emailed, I have a printed copy. So we'll get those out. Those will be out in Kellogg Hall after the service. So with that, let's um, move to the next part of our worship by collecting this morning's donation.
are so extremely grateful for all that you've given to us, Lord. We tr we are truly a privileged people. And Father, as we give back to you from what you've given to us, Father, we pray that you'd bless all of those that have given today. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would use everything that is brought here, Lord, not to just make this place a better place, but Father, I pray that you would help us as a body to prepare for the harvest that we know is coming. Lord, help us as a church to be ready. God, there are so many hurting souls out there in the community. There are so many souls that have no hope. They're seeing things going on in the world, and you are the answer to everything. So, Father, I pray, God, that specifically in this season, you would help us to be very efficient with everything that comes in, Lord, knowing that this is intended to be a blessing back to this community. So, Father, God, we pray that as we are blessed, Lord, that we would be a blessing to this community. So we thank you, Lord. So we pray a blessing upon this offering. We pray a blessing upon all those who have given. In Jesus' name. Let us dismiss children for Children's Church. This is the air I breathe. 
how true of a statement that is. He is the air that we breathe. And we can't really do it without him when we really think about it. Amen. So with that being said, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, worship team. Can we give it up for our worship team? Amen. And I know they, they give all glory and praise to God. Everything that we do is because of him. Amen. Lest any man should boast. And we can't boast. We can't even boast about being in here today. It's only by his grace that we are here, that we're saved, right? And this is why we can't judge one another. We can't judge no one. You know, so I give glory to that. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? I hope you had an awesome week. Um, I, I always want to start off by giving glory to God, giving glory to those in my life who love me and do this life with me. I honor my wife. Amen. Um, I honor the shepherd of our house, Pastor Doug, who is home resting as he was recovering from a cold. So keep him in prayer. And he'll be back with us next week. But also, there has been some challenges. Um, some of you may not know, our boiler in our cottage recently broke. It died. It gave up. It said, I'm calling it quits. I'm out of here. You people are just way too difficult. <laughs> Praise God. But someone say the body of Christ. The body of Christ. How awesome is the body of Christ? And we're very fortunate enough here where we have elders, we have a property and finance team. And I don't know if you've noticed, but those who have been here for years, you'll see when you walk around the property, there's certain things that look different from the way it did a long time ago. And it's because these men came together and they put their minds together and they got vision and they said, okay, let's make this better for what God is about to do in the house. And so now it was a matter of, wow, this is a very old cottage. What can we do? And minds got together and the property and finance team, along with the elders, have decided that we are going to move into the big white house right next door. Now, for us, of course, we're dancing and praising, right? No boiler. So to God be the glory and thank God for the church and thank God that when we find ourselves in a difficult place, that God can work miracles through the hands and minds of people and the hearts of people. Thank you, Elder Steve. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Al. Thank you, George. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Robert, our treasurer. And I want to give a special thanks to Bob Nietzsche right there, that man right there, and Joe Diaz. Where's Joe Diaz? Is he in here? Joe, come on. These two men yesterday came early in the morning and gave their whole Saturday to work on that house to make sure that it's getting completed so that this transition can happen. That's God. And there's so many moving parts and so many people who serve and so many people who make this happen. And we need to say thank you and give honor to those who labor in God, right? Because we don't need to pray for the harvest. We need to pray for the laborers. So this morning, I'm going to do my best to give you what I believe God has given me to give to you in a timely fashion. Amen? So, <laughs> so we're going to read out of Matthew chapter 3 today. Hold on. Matthew 
Technical difficulties, I tell you, all the time. This is why I always use paper until my papers blew away. <laughs> and then I said, okay, I'll surrender to the electronics, and here we go again. Oh, I tell you. I believe this is it. And if it's not, we going prophetic. <laughs> All right. You ready? Let's go. Matthew chapter 3, starting at verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was to repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said... He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brought of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned, who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing, for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is posed, ready to serve the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce fr good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I. So much greater that I'm not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit with fire. That is important. Keep that in mind. He is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork, then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said, so why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done. For we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his, bapti after his baptism, as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. Amen. John's message focused on repentance and the coming kingdom of heaven. The kingdom is defined as the rule that God exercises through the person, work, teachings of Jesus. The call to repent means one must abandon a sinful life and express sorrow for sins. John's bold statement to the religious leaders, such as the Pharisees and the Sadducees, were meant to hold them accountable for their prideful and selfish behavior, making them aware that just as Gentiles must be baptized after their repentance and conversions, so should the Jews. They were not going to be citizens of this coming kingdom, 
because they were descendants of Abraham. However, only when they repent and put their beliefs and faith in the coming Messiah. Praise God. Some now Christ, so now Christ has arrived, and John realizes that at this moment he must become less important, and Jesus must become more important. We learn from John the Baptist here that it's not about him, and it's not about us. There are moments where we must become less important, and he become more important, and his purposes become more important. Amen? I say this to you prophetically. This season will not take kindly to selfishness and prideful behavior. However, it will be resisted quickly and sternly. For his purpose must be fulfilled in your lives and in this earth. Every moment in this chapter and the next is vital to our existence today. We're going to continue reading in chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. And then we're going to get into what we're discussing this morning. And then I'll get you home. Then Jesus was led, chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. Forty days and forty nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus Jesus told them, no, the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scripture also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you for the reading and the power found in your word. In this season, saints, and many seasons, but particularly this one, Satan comes to rob us of our destiny. He's not trying to just stumble you. He wants to rob you of your purpose in this life. And he comes in a cunning and creative way. And therefore, we must be very mindful, vigilant to what he is doing in this hour. This attack upon Jesus was both timely and strategic. Satan was not attacking Jesus to annoy him, he was trying to rob Jesus of his destiny, just as he's trying to rob you and I. The Bible says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he always tries to do this strategically. Saints, we must know our enemy and his tactics, but we can only know that by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that means that we must know Jesus and the will of God, the Father, found in his word even more. I am speaking this morning briefly from the titled message, Do You Know Who Your Master Is? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he personally carried our sins in his body 
on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. I want to take a moment to take apart this passage. I want to take apart each attack because the way he attacked Jesus is the way he attacks you and I. And I want to make this, let's, let's just get into it and let's see what happens. But before we do that, I just want us to understand something. Satan doesn't want to give you a splinter. I can't explain this enough. He's not coming to, get to give you a splinter. He wants your head. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's not coming to give you a boo-boo. Okay? He wants your head. As I said before in my last message on New Year's Eve, you must discern the difference between a trial and self-affliction. In this case, you must discern the difference between Satan attacking you and the consequences from your decisions. Oftentimes, we think Satan is attacking us, but he's not. You are attacking you. The decisions you've made has caused consequences that appear to be attack, but it's self-affliction. And it's important that we discern that. Because if we don't, we won't know how to fight it. We'll be thinking that it's Satan attacking us when the problem is in the mirror. And the thing is, you can rebuke yourself, but if it's you, you have to change. Because if you don't change, you'll be going in circles, stepping out of the same crap you just stepped out. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 25. Yet... You say, the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O Israel. It, is it not my way which is fair and your way which is not fair? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. You following me, saints? Again, when a wicked man turns away from wickedness, which he committed, and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. Amen? So that's sealed. We know this to be true. So now, let's look at three ways that Satan attacked Jesus. One, he attacked his current weakness. He will attack your weakness current weakness. When Jesus returned from the wilderness, he was very what? Hungry. Satan attacks us when we are in a weak state, whether it's from some emotional trauma, exhaustion, or hunger. And Satan says, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Jesus counters these words with no. Scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus was able to counter Satan's attack for two reasons. One, he knew the truth of what God's word says about it. Two, which gave him the right perspective of his hunger the right perspective of his hunger. If you're fasting, but don't know why you are fasting, when the tempter comes to tempt you with a delicious meal, then there's no strength in you to resist because you don't have a why. Your why is important. Your why is the reason why you get out of bed in the morning. Your why is the reason you chase a goal and obtain that goal when that goal seems too far for you to reach. Your why is the reason why you don't give up on love because you know that love is God's will. So you go after it and you be consistent and you continue steadfastly because of your why. And what is your why? If you don't have a why this morning, saints, get one. 
get your why. Two, he attacked his identity. He will attack your identity. How many times in your walk, when you went through a mighty trial, did you question whether you were in God's will or whether God truly called you? Satan will try to go after your identity because if he can go after your identity, he can manipulate you, control you, motivate you by fear, cripple you, and all of the above. Your identity is important. This attack was supernatural. He takes Jesus to the city of Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and says, if you are the son of God, jump off. Now watch this. For scripture says, he even quotes scripture. For scripture says, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Do you know where that scripture is from? Psalm 91. Psalm 91 verse 11 through 12. He quotes scripture. Was he lying when he told Jesus that? No, he was not. The thing is this. Jesus responds to this. He, he says this. And notice that, notice this. He says, the scripture says, the scripture also say. All right, so Jesus says, the scripture also say. So he's saying, yeah, that, that, that is scripture. But he says, you must not test the Lord your God. This is very key. A lot of times you have to put scripture with other scriptures to get the full truth. This is why some Bibles have reference scriptures. Because, so Jesus does not deny that Satan is speaking scripture. However, he exposes Satan's attempt to manipulate the scripture to suit what he is trying to accomplish. Amen? And that's what Satan will do. He will come to you with, he will manipulate you with a truth. For instance, you go to the doctor, the doctor says, you have this. You're quiet now. The doctor says, you have this. This what this scan says, right here. And he points to it. But you received the prophecy about five years ago that said you were going to X, Y, Z. So now you got this reality in front of you and the prophecy spoken to you that contradict one another. Which one is true and which one is lie? Now tell me where your faith is. See, this is, this is where we're going, saints. We're going to a place in this life now, in 2024... That when you turn on the TV in maybe six months to a year, there are going to be realities that are going to be in front of your face. This is why we're here hearing these type of messages right now, because God is preparing you so that you are not afraid of what you may see. Because the CAT scan is going to show this, but God's word says this, and you're going to have to be able to discern the lie from the truth. And there's a possibility that at that moment, there won't be a pastor, an elder, or a friend to help counsel you through it. It might be you, the re this what looks like a reality, and the truth of God's word of what was spoken to you. And you will have to make a conscious decision on what you are going to believe in that moment. Do you hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning, saints? So, Satan was trying to attack Jesus' identity, and Jesus was able to counter it because he knew who he was. When you know who you are, you know what you can do. However, you also know what you should not do as well. Although Satan was correct, that Jesus could very well do this, Jesus knew that to abuse his power in this way 
would forfeit the mission. Sometimes people and circumstances want to pull you outside of the character. Want to take you outside of the character. You can be a kung fu master. You can be a prayer warrior. If God, if you speak to God, he can answer. You can have all the power in the world, but that does not mean it gives you the right to exercise it at certain moments. The most difficult part about being a leader is knowing and seeing something is not quite right or wrong and not being able to do anything about it into its proper time. Jesus has to look at us every day. And even in the sanctuary, he sees the wheat and the tear. Even in the house of God, he sees the wheat and the tear. In this room, there could be wheat and tear. But he will not come here and separate you into its proper time. Because when he died, he died so all shall live. So he doesn't come now because he knows if he comes now, many of us ain't going. Many of us are not going if he comes right now. So because of his grace and his love, he waits. Because he knows where you are and he knows where you need to be. And that's why he watches and weeps with you when you're going through that season of hell. And you're saying, God, deliver me. And he's saying, I want to, but if I do, you won't learn. And if I have to watch you go through this season of hell for a mist so you can be with me for all eternity, so be it. That's the love of a father. When you want to save your baby, but they must learn. Don't touch that, son, because it's going to burn you if you touch it. And you see him touching it, but you can't stop it. You can only say, Lord, be with him. Ooh. Hallelujah. God, have mercy. I am only flesh. <laughs> Three, he attacked his relationship with his father. He will try to attack your relationship with your creator. Another supernatural act. He takes Jesus to the highest mountaintop. And he shows Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he says this. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel and worship me. If you will kneel and worship me. The son of God, if you will bow and worship me. What made him think that Jesus would bow to him? He knew he was the son of God, right? Peter, only the Holy Spirit could have revealed that to you. <laughs> Pridefulness. Pridefulness, saints, we must be very watchful of. Pride will make you believe that you're entitled. And it will make you believe that you have both power and authority that you don't have. Pride to have you walking around here thinking you somebody when you not. Pride to have you believing that you got keys to open a door that you don't. Pride to have you sitting there trying to use every key three and four times and the door's not open. You're still thinking you got it. Pride to have you going in circles for days and weeks and months and years. Pride to have you believing that you're walking in the glory of God, but you're walking in... The glory of your father, the devil. You'll be thinking you're worshiping God in the sanctuary, but you're actually worshiping Baal. 
Baal. Hear what the Spirit is saying this morning, saints. Let us not be deceived in this season because deception in this season will cost you your life. In the garden of, in the garden, the scripture said they died, died. Not all death is a physical death. Stop being afraid of your body dying and be afraid of your soul dying. For the word says, don't fear man, but fear the one who can cast the soul into cell, into hell after you die. That's what the word of God says. Stop worrying about when Jesus returns and worry about the next five minutes of your life. Because it's not promised to you. Live like he was coming back today. I'm preaching to myself. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to myself. We all working this thing out. I just get the privilege to sit here and tell you. But it doesn't mean that I'm not speaking to myself. There is a season where we will preach out of our wholeness. But sometimes there's a season where you preach out of your brokenness. And every day... I'm dependent upon this bread to come out of the sky. And I don't know if it's coming from the east or the west. I just got to look to see when it and where it's coming. <clears throat> and the more I dive into the word, I'm not sure if I ever want to leave that place. Because having everything sometimes take you away from the thing that truly matters. David says, give me enough where I don't have to beg, but don't give me enough where it'll take me away. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? Is it worth your own soul? 80 years is what in, the, in, in eternity? Is it truly worth it? I heard someone tell me the other day, people never choose to live until they're about to die. Everybody wants to start to live when, they, when they're told that they're, poss they're possibly going to die. That's when people want to live. Why can't we just hear the word of God and say, you know what? I want to live today because I heard the truth and your grace is sufficient so I choose to live despite of all else. But I want to talk to you real quick about this authority and pride. Acts chapter 19, verse 13 through 16. A group of Jews was traveling from town to town. Casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantations saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time, they were tried, one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from their house naked and battered. Let me tell you something. The spiritual world ain't a game. It's not a game. I've seen it face to face. I've come face to face with a demon. I, they, they're not a game. And we don't go. This is why the archangel said to Michael, it's not... It is not I, but it is the Lord that rebuked thee. Because we don't do it in our strength. We do it in the strength of the Lord. So as we are surrendered to him, we then get the opportunity to walk in that power, in that authority. But you can't walk in that authority living in both worlds. You can only serve one master. 
And when you serve that master, you then have the right to go in his house and go in his refrigerator and eat what you want. But until then, get your house in order. I'm going to skip along. I want to give you three things to watch out for in this season and to strengthen yourself with during this fast. (coughs) This will help you to be in a better stance that when Jesus was tempted, when it's your time to be tempted, Because when he truly comes, he'll come at the moment that you are about to cross over into what God is going to do. When you cross over into your prophecy and the prophetic word begins to uh, be revealed, unveiled, manifest in your life. One, tame your appetite. This is a crucial discipline. It is a painful process to get there, but it's worth the outcome. Make sure that you rule your appetite and that your appetite does not rule you. All gluttony is harmful for the flesh and soul. This body can never have enough. It has a thirst that can never be quenched in the flesh. Gluttony is defined as the overindulgence or lack of self-restraint in food, drink, or wealth items. The English word comes from the Latin, and it means to gulp. Gluttony is a form of worship that feeds our own self-love and of inevitable self-destruction. God wants to be first in everyone's lives And the flesh should never take his place. Humanity was made for more than to merely serve physical appetites. We must get this under control. All addictions must be overcame. Anything that has hold over you must die in this season. This, as I said before, the spirit of the living God should be the only spirit that rules you. We have to stop depending on other outlets other than God. I am an ex-smoker. I am an ex a, a lot of things. We ain't going to go there. Mind your business. But we got to overcome it one by one. It's real. It's hard. But it's not impossible. We just got to start somewhere. Even if you walked out this sanctuary and said, you know what? Okay, I'm going to write a list, and I'm going to start with this one, and this is how I'm going to do it. Write out the strategic plan. Write the goal. Make a goal. Conquer it. You can do it. You can do it. Because it's not you that's doing it. It's the Holy Spirit in you. Just let him in. Just let him in. Jesus gave him to you. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's like having needs, and then somebody put a million dollars right here and said, yeah, you can just use it anytime you need to tap into it. And we, we look at it, and we just walk the other way. That's what it is. The Holy Spirit has everything we can ever imagine or think of. Ezekiel sixteen forty nine, Sodom's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness, while the poor and needy suffered outside her door. Two. We're almost done. Two. Know who you are. And whose you are. This is very important. If you have a question or doubt in your mind today, if you are truly Jesus, 
If you have a doubt in your mind that you don't belong to Jesus, we need to deal with that today. Okay? I don't want you walking out this door. As an elder of this church, I'm saying, I don't want you walking out that door. If you question whether Jesus is in your life, please obey what I'm saying. Don't walk out that door today if you question whether Jesus, whether you are Jesus's, okay? Please don't do that. Know who you are. This will be, this will be a easier, this will be easier when you are fully, when you fully decide that nothing else will come before God. That's the conscious decision that we have to make. Nothing else can come before God. Once you make the decision, then you can start to practice it. But if you haven't truly made the decision, you won't stick to the practice. You might try for one or two days, but then you'll fall off. It's because it's not truly decided. Okay? So we have to know that. John chapter 1, verse 12, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. And worship team, you could come, you could come up and uh and start getting us going because I'm starting to descend. Put on your seatbelts. Amen. Three, protect your relationship with God. Saints, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, protect your relationship with God. Protect it. Don't let nothing come for that. I love every single one of you in here. And if you don't believe that, then you need to come and tell me because there's something about me I need to check then. But I'm sorry. I won't let you come between me and God. I can look at my wife, and I know she's looking right back at me. I can't let you come between me and God. And I already know not to come between you and him. Straight up. Straight up. If anything, I'm going to do whatever it takes to push you there. And if you're taking your time, I got to drag you. Sorry. <laughs> but we going. <laughs> we going. And you could drag me if you could carry me. But we going. Amen. <laughs> we have to be that serious in this season about it. Now, granted, I know some of us have loved ones that we want to come into the kingdom. And worship team, don't wait for me. Just come on in. We'll ride this thing together. We want family members to come in. We want loved ones to come in. Don't beat them with the Bible. Don't pressure them. Pressure only produces rebellion. You got to love them in. But watch this. You can't love them in if you're not fully in yourself. It's hard to love someone into the kingdom when they see that so many compromises in you. When they're questioning your integrity and your character and the God that you claim they're supposed to serve, but you're only serving them half-heartedly. It's not about being perfect. That's the deception. It's not about walking around your house all day. Oh. <laughs> it's not about that. It's not about talking Christianese. This ain't no religious thing. You don't got to walk around with candles all day and a hood over your head. We're not a cult. This is about living a life of repentance. It's about when they see you screw up, you get up and you say, Lord, forgive me. And then they watch your God forgive you as you continue to walk in his favor and protection. And then after a while, they're looking, they're going, wow. You still serving? You still believing? You still confessing? And you can say, yeah, my God is good. See, my God is the only God that is being professed and proclaimed 
that I didn't decide to worship because of information, but rather an experience. I came into Jesus because I had an experience and an encounter with him. Not because some information or some discipline that has me regimented so I know that I need to do this and everything is mechanical. No, it's relational. And in that relationship with God, sometimes it gets ugly. My prayer closet is ugly. I'm not attractive in my prayer closet. Not to say that I am now, but I'm just saying, in my prayer closet, I am vulnerable. I am transparent. I am undone. I am messy. I barely even speak words because I'm crying so bitterly. But he understands every moment of it. I go into my prayer closet messy. Like my son outside playing in the mud and running in the house tracking up the whole floor. That's what I do. And he, and when, because the world has taught me that if I do that, I'm going to get yelled at. I might even get a paddle to the bottom. So I come in and I project that upon God. So I avoid him. I avoid him and I don't speak to him. Or when I speak to him, I'm not transparent with him because I'm afraid that I'm just going to get punished. But God shocks me every single time when instead of yelling at me or being angry with me, he hugs me and then affirms me and who I am. Then he takes off my shoes. Then he cleans me up. And then he'll allow me to walk out part of my consequence. And that's the discipline. When you walk out your consequence, when you made the decision, when you made the bed, now you got to lie in it. But even then, he gives you grace. Because you're not lying in it alone. When you're walking through it, you're not alone in it. Son, I can't take you out of this because you did it and I got to teach you not to do this again. So I got to let you walk through it, a little of it. I won't make you walk through all of it. Yes, a little. I won't make you walk through it all because you'll fall away if you do. So my grace will shorten the time. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six, 36, last scripture today. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses Jesus replied you must love your Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and greatest commandment a second is equal important equally important love your neighbor as you love yourself both commandments are hard to do in the flesh. Could everyone stand, please? Both commandments are hard to do in the flesh. But in the spirit, we can do it. This morning, the spirit of God wants to encourage you that he is with you. Two, that the tempter is coming. Three, take this time to prepare yourself so that when he comes, you will respond with the truth of God's word and with the knowledge of who you are. How many of you are ready to go to the next level? Raise your hand. God is restoring families. He's restoring relationships. And there are people who you've been desiring to come to Christ who will be coming. Some of us have gone through some serious things in this season. But I tell you the truth right now, your wounds 
will be nurtured by God himself. Someone in this room, your life was saved so that you could be restored. I hear the spirit of the Lord said, I saved you. You were supposed to die. You were supposed to literally die. Satan tried to sift you out, but God says, I saved you. I've saved your life to bring you here to this moment. Whoever you are, come to me right now. Extend your hands. The devil is a liar. I don't know what happened to you, man. I don't know what happened to you. But it was a close call. And this day, I declare right now in Jesus' name, you shall live and not die to proclaim the name of the Lord. Everything that the Father has spoken over you must come to pass. It must come to pass. I break this generational thing over you now in Jesus' name. I declare right now that you have victory in Christ Jesus. And from this moment forward, no more games. No more hokey pokey. In and all in. For you no longer live for yourself, but you live for the one who died for you. In the name of the mighty Lord Jesus, I anoint you this day that your wounds will be nursed, that your health will be restored, and that your mind will be healed, and that your heart will be whole. And all of the saints say amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you for stepping out in boldness. There's a lot going on in this atmosphere. But Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. From the left to the right, God, I pray that a tsunami of an extra measure of grace and faith will just overtake your people right now in Jesus' name. I pray for uncommon favor to come upon you. Uncommon favor to come upon you. I pray an extra measure of blessing upon you and your whole family in Jesus' name in this new season. I thank you, Lord, that you called us to be more than conquerors, and we shall be. We shall live and not die to proclaim the name of the Lord. God bless you. Jesus loves you. So do I.
draw near Whatever the pain Whatever may come Whatever may fall Your love overcomes Your love overcomes I will call I will call upon you Whatever I face You are with me
Stay there, right, right there. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Through your word, through your spirit, through your saints. If any of us need to come to this altar before we leave, do so. Be obedient to your maker, to your master. For he wishes to bless you. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be the glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forever. Amen. Glad that 
firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus cause he's never Faithful through generations, so I would he fail now. He won't, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail. Never been more glad 
Faithful through generations. 